You want to join the exclusive 4090 Club. You want to have raw power at your fingertips. You want to be the sexiest nerd at the LAN party. Oh, I get it. But there's so many goddamn 4090s to choose from. Which one's the best? Let's find out. <laughs> Bodie the Movie Maker here. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090. It's the best prosumer graphics card for pretty much everything you need a graphics card for. For me, it's Unreal Engine filmmaking. For you, it might be gaming, playing Starfield, AI workflows, 3D rendering, video editing, and way more. Powered by the NVIDIA Ada Lovelace architecture, the RTX 4090 is the sexy sports car of the computer component world. This technological Lamborghini has been giving computer nerds like me techno boners since it was announced. Perverted. I know. I have been extremely satisfied by my 4090's performance for my Unreal Engine filmmaking development workflow. I need to extract the highest resolutions possible while enabling real-time global illumination, ray tracing, and high-resolution textures. That's where the RTX 4090's 24 gigs of VRAM comes in handy. Not to mention all the other technology magical sauce packed into this aluminum brick that I won't pretend I comprehend. Great, so if you're like me and you wanna build a PC for your graphically demanding use case, then go ahead, get a 4090, slap it in there and you're done. Yeah, but it ain't that simple. Let me explain. Before we get into it, if you find this video useful, please hit the like, leave a comment and subscribe. So the issue with getting a 4090 is you have to first decide which one you're gonna get. And there's a lot to choose from. Who's got the attention span for scrolling through this whole list of RTX 4090s? Speaking of attention spans, now I'm over here because we gotta keep it unpredictable. <laughs> Don't want it to get boring. You weren't getting boring, were you? Were you, you piece of shit? But seriously, there are a lot of NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090s. Why the fuck are there so many NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090s? And another thing, if I have to say NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 one more time, I'm gonna punch you in the dick. Who? You. What did I do? Nothing. I just really wanna punch you in the dick right now. <laughs> <laughs> so back to my question, why are there so many 4090s? By the way, comment your favorite 4090 below. We know you got one. Well, Nvidia manufactures the GPU chip, but they are only one of a gazillion different manufacturers that then take that same graphics card chip and put that chip on different boards and then outfit their boards with different cooling solutions two fans or three fans, then there's different types of fans and some supposedly have a longer life than others, then there are GPUs that are water cooled. Some have integrated water coolers, some you have to attach your own water cooling system, then there are even some 4090s with an extra HDMI port. However, be warned, it appears you can only use four out of the five ports at a time. So you're not actually getting more concurrent outputs than other 4090s. So you're really only getting the ability to output from two HDMI ports at once, which saves you having to adapt one of your display ports to an HDMI with a display to HDMI adapter. And then each different RTX 4090 has its own look. Some sexier than others. Some have vibrant RGB lighting to complete your gaming setup. You know, if you like to have your computer look like its own little mini rave. I spent a lot of money on my graphics card. You had to sell my kidney. Some GPUs even have BIOS switches like mine that can be switched into gaming mode to turn up the fan speed and help you overclock your GPU so you can get every last drop of performance. 
The most important difference is that some 4090s ostensibly have more performance than others because different manufacturers use different power deliveries and coolings. They can have slightly different performance. Cards with better power delivery and better cooling can overclock a little faster. So how do you choose the best RTX 4090? Should we just look for the best performance and forget all the other variables? Well, temper your expectations here, bucko. Some sources state that the performance difference for the average user between RTX 4090s will be as small as two to 3%. But if that matters to you, then hey, put some extra cash into it. So what's the best way to choose your RTX 4090? Here's how I chose mine. I was a cheapskate. I set price as the priority. I wanted the least expensive one I could get. So that was right around $1,600. So that narrowed the options, since you can find 4090s at all the way up to $1,000 more. You know, more than $2,600. Cha-ching! But I also needed my GPU to fit into my case, so I checked to make sure that this specific model's dimensions would work with my case. Then I learned that GPUs without RGB are more power efficient and often will have a lower wattage power supply unit recommendation. So you can get a less powerful power supply and save money. So a slightly more expensive GPU might allow you to purchase a less expensive PSU and in the end, save some moolah. Despite what all the haters out there say on the PC forums, just cause I got a 4090 does not mean I want to throw my money away. So ultimately I ended up going with the MSI Supreme X and in my opinion, it's the best RTX 4090 for me because it's got the best value. However, if I had a bit more in the budget, I might have gone for the MSI RTX 4090 Supreme Liquid X. It boasts all the same specs as mine, but the actual card is much smaller because it shifts a lot of the cooling duty to a two-fan liquid-cooled radiator. Then I would have had an easier time accessing the PCI slot that this GPU blocks, which I may want to use one day for an Elgato capture card. And that extra money I could have spent on the GPU would have saved me in having to buy a GPU riser to mount this vertically if I want to get at that PCIe slot. By the way, you can find links to all of the GPUs and accessories that I'm talking about in the description, as well as all of the components I used in my Unreal Engine beast over here. But what if you want an extra HDMI port? For whatever reason, it might fit your monitor situation. Then I would say the best RTX 4090 might be the ASUS GeForce RTX 4090 Tough Gaming OC. Or maybe you wanna go straight to the source and buy from the manufacturer who should reasonably be the one who could make the best RTX 4090 and get the Founders Edition, manufactured by NVIDIA themselves. Or maybe you want it all. RGB, water-cooled, extra HDMI port. Maybe you're that guy. Yes, please. If you want it all, in that case, then the best RTX 4090 is the new ASUS GeForce RTX 4090 Republic of Gamers Strix LCOC. This thing is water-cooled, and RGBAF. And it would sure come with a signed, sealed, and stamped invitation to the 4090 Club. Ha! But back to reality. I found the best 4090 for me, choosing the features that were important to me, the power efficiency, and the non-RGB-ness that worked for me. That's why I ended up with the MSI Supreme X. And I love the gunmetal look. It's totally my style, but that is just luck because I did not prioritize looks. Are you calling me ugly? I would never, baby. You're the sexiest GPU. Why are you talking about these other GPUs like they're so special? That was just for the video. You're the only 4090 for me, baby. You said I was cheap and then you chose me because I was the least expensive. No, 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 baby. You were the second least expensive. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, no, no, I didn't mean it that way. While they work out their issues, don't forget to hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the bell. And now for our final segment, 20 seconds of fun. You've earned it. 
testing audio one two three face fuck head fart shit face fuck farts hey there building better bikeways for buttery butt bangers one two five three eight seven zero testing audio 